What do you think, Joy? Well, it's just, yeah, it's all political. And I know that uh, Republicans are nostalgic for the 50s. I didn't know it was the 1850s. I mean, we are entering what I see as a new version of the Dark Ages. <laughs> Do you mean 1854 when the Republican Party was formed to oppose slavery? <laughs> Happy pre-Friday, everyone. Almost the weekend, or what Kat likes to call a two-day blackout. <laughs> Speaking of, Lisa Booth is back on the show. It's quite an achievement, Woo! given... Yeah, what? Sure, why not? Well, somebody had a problem back there. But well, I guess we should be grateful, given her and Kat's commute to the studio today. <laughs> what is it? <laughs> I think that's bad. You should see them park. <laughs> Chicks. <laughs> Says a sexist. A sexist would say that. So you know what I love more than world peace, red wine, and light bondage? <laughs> a poll on American distrust in the media. It's like injecting adorable puppies into my waiting veins. And lo and behold, we got one. It's true, a new Gallup poll shows that more than 75% of the public has very little confidence in legacy media like newspapers and TV news. So first, it's kind of interesting that people still use newspapers to get their news. I guess it's a good way to start the day before they spend the next 12 hours churning their own butter. <laughs> but only 11, 21% of respondents said they had a great deal of confidence in newspapers, which of course they get from reading Kathy. <laughs> <laughs> It was worst for TV news at 16%, which was only slightly less hated than Congress at 12%. But that's like being told you're only slightly more popular than chlamydia. Oh, God. This after a, a Reuters survey showed the U.S. media ranked last among 46 countries when it comes to public trust. We even ranked behind Canada, and they don't even have electricity. <laughs> So you think an industry witnessing a collapse in their trust might try to figure out why, but not the media, because their profit model is always pointing fingers, so it's impossible for them to implicate themselves. So if the public is sick of their lies, well, then that's the public's fault. So they just assume they can smear Americans and push policies meant to punish them, and we'll still be here for them later. Now they're creating a narrative that a domestic 9-11 is just around the corner. If we don't do this, then what happens, in your view? Well, look, um, I, I think it's our inability to imagine what will happen, um, yeah. which is our greatest danger. Um, yeah. It is a replay of 9-11, and we cannot imagine yeah. what could, this attack on America. And we have to get out of that. We call yeah. it the American experiment because it could have failed. So what's it going to be, you bozos? Are we terrorists or are we slave owners? Mm. Are we on the road to another civil war or another 9-11? I'd say make up your mind, but you need minds to make up. And Joy and that freak could barely scrape four brain cells together. So this is a great opportunity for me to explain how to assess the media in a way that will change the way you look at it forever or until the world ends in eight years. Thank you, AOC. Yes, it's time for... Greg's amazing and utterly helpful and no less sexy analogy. <laughs> Now with 65% less body hair. Oh, yeah. Hey, thank you, Nair. <laughs> Our uh, new sponsor of Greg's Amazing Analogies. I use every product that uh, sponsors my analogies. <laughs> that could get dangerous. Yes, there are some places, uh, Lisa. <laughs> anyway, here's the analogy. Imagine there's a website that keeps tabs on your body weight. You can plug your name into it, and your weight pops up. It's simple. Type in Cat Tim. And just like that, it comes up 170 pounds. <laughs> but in fairness to her, that includes makeup and hair extensions. No. Now, let's say you insert your name into the site's search engine and your weight comes up and it's way off base. You weigh 150 pounds and it says 300. Immediately, you learn that this site is not to be trusted. And you worry that other people will search your name and be given the same bogus info about you. 
It's factually unreliable because you know the truth about your own weight. That, friends, is the red pill that exposes the media's fakery. You don't know how wrong the media is until you're the subject of the article. It's like being a guy wrongly sentenced for a crime you didn't commit, only he knows the truth. Once it's about you, then you can see the disconnect between reality and reporting. You become the world's greatest expert on bias because you're the world's greatest expert on the topic, you. Meanwhile, everyone else accepts the site's data because they aren't you. But then that perspective changes when they see how their own reality is distorted by reporters who only want to find the ugliness. Good evening, kings, queens, and bishops. We are the Chess News Network outside the 2021 National Championships. We're waiting for this year's winner, Larry St. Lawrence, to emerge. Larry, Larry. So what do you attribute to your great success this year? Uh, uh, well, Gary Kasparov is my hero, so I just do what he would do. Gary Kasparov, a known Russian. Was there <laughs> Russian collusion in your performance this year? Uh, well, no, I just I, I admire his style, and I, I teach it when I play with my kids. Larry St. Lawrence, playing with children, very inappropriate. <laughs> Do you have anything else to say about these allegations? Well, alleg well first of all, playing with kids, I... I don't do what you th implying that I do with kids. And secondly, allegations, I have nothing to confess, okay? Larry St. Lawrence, a series of confessions with inappropriate allegations. <laughs> I'm sorry, I, I, this is over, I have to go. But wait, well, well what about holding the uh, event indoors? Do you feel that negatively impacted climate change? <laughs> well, what else do you know about Brazilian sex trafficking rings? <laughs> Leave me alone! Leave me alone! <laughs> Now, I've been in media for 30 years, which is pretty amazing since I'm only 36. <laughs> I've written pieces on people, and people have written pieces on me. I know how it works. It's never to help you. Their entire purpose is to slam their subject because in their world, that's success. You don't win awards for doing a piece on Trump supporters that says, wow, these people are decent Americans, or even, hmm, most Trump supporters are decent Americans. You find one that isn't, and then you smear the rest. Anger and fear sells. Whenever I'm interviewed about my job, I can easily sense the narrative some reporters have. It's not about success. It's always about rumors. I keep getting the same questions. Is it true you got caught trying to put a camera in Jesse Waters' dressing room? <laughs> Is it true Dana Perino lets you try on her dresses after the show? <laughs> yes and yes, but why not, <laughs> why not stick to our amazing ratings? One Piece actually claimed that I don't talk to people in the elevator which is odd since I don't even take the elevator. I'm carried by shirtless Chippendale dancers <laughs> up every single flight of stairs. The cost of the dancers is why my staff doesn't get dental, but they're okay with it. But it's like they'd already written the article and were looking for quotes to fill in later. Talk to anyone who's been the subject of media scrutiny, they'll say the same thing. The contrast between what's true and what's written is huge. The difference is as vast as what Lisa Booth tells her parents what she did last weekend and what she really did last weekend. <laughs> so that's today's lesson in how to view the media. If you'd like to hear more on this topic, I'll be doing this for the rest of my life <laughs> or until the world ends in eight years. Let's welcome tonight's guest. Like a lazy law student. She just can't pass the bar. Republican strategist and Fox News contributor Lisa Booth. He's so conservative, he sleeps wearing a CPAC machine. Washington Times opinion editor and Fox News contributor Charlie Hurd. He finds money the way bears find honey in a forest while not wearing pants. Author of the upcoming book, There's No Free Lunch, Boston Group founder David Bonson. Her blood alcohol level is hand sanitizer. Fox News contributor, Cat Tip. So, Elise, I want to ask you a serious <laughs> question, so I hope you're sober. It is Thursday, Greg. Yeah, I know, I know. Me? You're getting to that point. Um, the, I, I mean, have you ever been the target of a topic. I think that this is the only way people find out. And I think that's becoming like, as more, as more people are written about in this era of social media, they understand how the truth is malleable. What do you think? 
Well, I agree with you. Also, I kind of match the Gutfeld logo. But no, I have not been the subject of that kind of attack piece. However, I worked in Republican politics on the communication side of things. So the people I worked for were constantly attacked by the media. And also, you looked at the juxtaposition between the way the conservative was treated and the way the liberal was treated, and, mm -hmm. and clearly there was a, a difference. But look, the media are a bunch of lying liars. I mean, Trump was absolutely right when he said they're the enemy of the people. And, you know, we, we kind of like joke and gloss over these things, but what the media has done has done significant harm to the country. I mean, no institution in this country has lied more, done more damage to this nation than the media. I mean, you look at the lies that they have pushed about police, mm -hmm. have led to some of the you know largest spikes in cities across America, deaths significantly, uh, majority of them are African Americans. I mean, you look at lies about the coronavirus giving China time to cover up and you mm -hmm. know get rid of any kind of incriminating evidence. You look at the lies about the election with Hunter Biden's e email. So I mean, like, they've done so much harm mm -hmm. to the country. So like, why would you trust them at this point? I will give you a 97.3% on the red meat meter. They, well, what, how, do I get, how do I get it to 100? I don't think, I think it's good to just, it's, it's a little bit below the 100 right now is what where you want to be. No, if you go a little too, you don't, you don't want to get up there too much because then, you know, <laughs> where am I, Charlie? You know what the, po the, po the point that the orange lady's making? <laughs> Is that the Garfield just like Trump? Woman? The Garfield woman. <laughs> yeah. National news dropped the ball on crime because yeah. they don't have to report on things that happen locally. It's the local news oh, yeah. that the stuff's happening outside their door. So it's like Philadelphia, another man shot, blah, blah, blah. But it's like, uh, what's his name? Who's the guy? Don Lemon will say, like, I went out to dinner. I didn't see anybody getting shot. <laughs> I was recognized at Chez Panisse. <laughs> and, uh, you know, whatever. So no. it's like there's a... There's a we almost need local news. Oh, without it. No, I, I really do believe that a, a huge part of the disintegration of the media is that uh, the loss of the local news, because, of course, a, as you point out, they, I mean, we spent a lot of time in local news. They don't have time for, yeah. for bias. They don't have time to make this crap up. They've got, like, car accidents and house fires and, and you know, traffic jams or whatever to cover. And you, it's really hard to blame a traffic jam uh, or something like that on whatever global warming, racism. Or, yeah, or racism. They, they'll find a way, though. Yeah, they, no, they, they will can find do a way. It. But, they did but, it. They did. They, they looked at the traffic jam and found that 53 percent of the cars right, were white. Right. Exactly. <laughs> but 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 you make a really important, serious point, and and that is that uh, I remember my you know when I first got into the newspaper business, the, all of my editors, the, the the mantra was, and I'm sure you remember this. The mantra was that every story you ever write. Somebody out there is an expert on it. Right. And so every story, you have to make sure you don't get anything wrong because out there, every story has a potential to, to convince the, all those experts for that story right. that everything else in the story in the newspaper is bull. Exactly. And if you get it wrong, you ruin it for everybody. And so and and, and so we we were like on a high wire every day. Like you couldn't Such get anything wrong. You couldn't get somebody's you couldn't spell somebody's name wrong. I I learned that lesson yep. in in my in my job when I was at in, in Prevention Magazine because I was writing health stuff. Yeah. And I would go into uh, I'd be writing about diabetes and then I would just, I would make one mistake and you know there'd be a lot of angry diabetics. Yeah. Coming after me. What is this the only industry really that refuses to admit its blunders? What I thought was fascinating is that 16% said they did yeah. <laughs> trust it. And I was thinking, I'm in the business of trying to find opportunistic investments. I want to do a deal <laughs> with those people. <laughs> the 16% the that find the media trustworthy. I don't I don't think it's true that this all started three, four, five years ago. No. I think it's hit a point where it's at new levels mm -hmm. and, and it's heightened because of social media. But I don't think the media was trustworthy when I was a kid. Right. It, and it's just sort of progressed from we there. We just didn't know. Yeah, I don't Or think, we just assumed. And I think that there was still, at the final level, there was some sort of standard where even when some of the writers would say things totally disingenuous, I was thinking back with the Kavanaugh stuff a few years ago, I remember thinking about Robert Bork, which was in the late right. 80s. And it was abysmal. And I was a really cool 12-year-old kid at the time <laughs> who was following this story very yes. closely. <laughs> But the media was lying like crazy about him. But there was, it wasn't the same level uh, uh, with Kavanaugh where there was no accountability. The, the, at that point, people just quit even trying to pretend they were being truthful or objective. I met Robert Bork once. Probably the best smoker I've ever seen. He would smoke his cigarette like this, and it would get all the way down. <laughs> and then you'd just hold on to it. You'd, you'd have, like, got, you needed a roach clip? Yeah, it was like, it was like amazing. Uh, I, I don't know what else happened that night, Kat. Yeah. <laughs>
<laughs> um, have you ever been the victim of media misinformation? Obviously. Yes. Yeah, I, I, I obviously have. Well, first, yeah, I had a, we were doing, we were talking about the, like the Matt Gates stuff and then someone, Liz, Liz Clayman said something to me about sex work in general and I replied to her and there was a headline saying that I thought like pedophilia was cool or something like that. And I was like, I was sitting there at brunch and I was like, wait, why are all these people commenting on my photo saying I'm a pedophile? I was like, oh, a completely false headline, got it. Yeah. But when you mentioned that story, that expose about how you're a jerk saying, you, yeah. the anonymous source saying that you don't talk to people in the elevator, that was far from my favorite part of the article. <laughs> my favorite part was they also used as evidence an anonymous source, I am not kidding that said yeah he doesn't drink with me at the bar anymore yeah that was the best part <laughs> they quoted it and they were like he doesn't drink at the bar anymore in general and i was like that isn't that good <laughs> yes. like, isn't yeah. that a good thing yeah it was like yeah, yeah maybe i decided to have a home life yeah exactly that was the, that was the, the crux of the article it was like yeah. he used to go out with people at red eye and now he just doesn't go to the bar yeah, and i'm like, like that's it course. i was like that's that's the scandal oh they missed that whole yeah <laughs> other thing where I killed those people. You're, you're, much, you're much better when you're destroying your liver. Yes, exactly. I had to sacrifice my organs for my employees. Hell no. All right. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.